One of our favorite activities is hiking and walking. It's not unusual for Barbara to average 16,000 steps on her Fitbit per day. On day two of our sightseeing in Yangon, we had to fulfill that need to do a walking tour. Go to the internet, do a search, Yangon walking tour, and you find yourself back at Maha Bandula Park with the Independence Monument. And uh, we are trying to launch ourselves on a walking tour of downtown following internet direction. If you missed it, this is what we did on day one with our driver, and you can find that in previous vlogs. We're now headed towards the three landmarks uh, straight ahead, City Hall, the Aya Bank, and the Emmanuel Baptist Church on the right. As a point of reference, the red building in the background is a former Supreme Court building. We'll be walking by the other side of that building on our walking tour. This impressive colonial-style building is the headquarters of the Aya Bank, it once housed Myanmar's first department store, Row and Company, completed in 1910. It was referred to as the Herods of the East. Another throwback is Emmanuel Baptist Church on the other corner. On this map, we're heading north in the park towards Aya Bank and the Emmanuel Baptist Church, walking along Mahar Bandula Road to Pansadan, and then turning south on Pansadan. It is described as Yangon's most beautiful street. By the end of this log, we'll have walked down Pansadan to the Yangon River. Yangon, which used to be known as Rangoon in colonial times, they got their independence in 1948 from the British Empire, is known for its colonial architecture. And this walk is going to take us on some of that. Surprisingly, Yangon has the highest concentration of colonial buildings in the world. Burma became a colony of Britain in 1824 after the First Anglo-Burmese War and remained a colony until 1948. After independence, the country had been run by a military regime where no infrastructure improvements were made, leaving colonial structures standing. Some in more disrepair than others, as you will see. If you're my age, and you're definitely not, you'll have maybe fond memories of UN Secretary General Yu Thant from Burma. He served from 1961 to 1971, a record 10 years and one month. I was pleasantly surprised uh, when I came across his grandson, Thant Min Yu, who among many other things is spearheading the drive to maintain Yangon's architectural heritage. He is chairman of the Yangon Heritage Trust and his book, uh, The Hidden History of Burma, is great reading. So there's City Hall and some really interesting old architecture as we head down this way. More colonial architecture as we turn South on so? Road. Oh. Down this way. And just on the right side is probably what I consider to be the second most important colonial building in uh, Yangon. Imagine an era when the British Empire was held together by telegram technology. That was the case here and hence this magnificent building so essential to the survival of the empire and a no-brainer to be included in the 188 British era structures in Yangon City's heritage list and thereby giving Yangon the best collection of colonial era architecture in the world. Can you imagine when telegrams were the thing, yeah. the only means of communication? Now it's the internet, of course. Hey, how did I figure that out? Perhaps the only building in Yangon that would have been more important than this would have been the Secretariat. Uh, only several blocks away, it was the headquarters of the British Colonial Administration. And it's a building I highlighted in vlog number 19. 
This stretch of Pansadon Street is the most beautiful street of Yangon. So there's the Yangon, the Rangoon Monumental Colonial Buildings, as well as some galleries and a few coffee shops. Yeah, and over here we have another old building. As a point of reference, the red building in the background is a former Supreme Court building. We'll be walking by the other side of that building on our walking tour. At this point, we are walking by the Supreme Court. It's uh, a neoclassical Victorian building, and uh, it was completed in 1911. This Queen Anne revival structure housed the British court, and then after independence until 2006, the Supreme Court of Myanmar, when it moved to the new capital. And there you have it, the former Supreme Court building in the foreground, in the background, the Telegraph Building. And there's one of Yangon's leading restaurants, the Pansadan, that gets mixed reviews on TripAdvisor. Along the way, we pop into uh, one of Yangon's leading tea houses. A classic Yangon street view, the intersection of Merchant Road and Pansadon Road. On the left, the historic Sofair and Company building, followed by government offices and the Tower of the Port Authority down on Strand Street. That's near the Yangon River, which will be the end of this vlog. Arrived at the intersection with Merchant Road, right next to the cafe in town. Another one of the nice coffee shops along this area. Another view from the cafe in town along classic Yangon. And Barb, across the street you said this white building which yeah, we the really... Rander House. We can't see too much of it. Yeah. It's the Rander House. Rander House built by the Indians from India. Yes, the Rander House was built in 1932 by Surti Indian traders who came from Rander, a port town in Gujarat, India. It's unusual for its simple American classical style reminiscent of downtown Chicago. Yeah. Okay, and uh, a, a, jewel, a jewel across the street. A jewel across the street. It's so fair. And company building built in 1906. Uh, they were Baghdad born Jews and educated here in Rangoon. Okay. And further down, the white building you think might be? Oh, it is. The Myanmar Port Authority building. Okay. Right by the waterfront. Where the tower is down there. Yes. I must interject there that uh, Yangon has some of the best uh, transit buses I've seen anywhere in Southeast Asia. Let's continue. And there on the bottom right of the building, you still see Sofair and Company, a restaurant where you can enjoy a historical meal in a heritage building. This appears to be a government office now. It says Inland Water Transport. Uh, and uh, lots of uh, government workers here. Yes, street vendors abound in this particular part of Pansadine uh, Street because people have to eat somewhere, so they go out on the sidewalk and just grab something. That's how it is. And one more time, a reminder that most men in Burma wear the longi. And yes, to us Westerners, it does look like a woman's dress, but there's no such connotation of such in Burma. Longis are also worn by women, but they're wrapped differently. That's what government workers 
That's how they get fed. The little schools of Vietnam. And, and it was also my impression that about 50% of uh, Burmese women were this traditional cosmetic named Tanaka is used to protect the skin from uh, sunlight and also to provide for cooler skin in hot weather. The, uh, and yes, right there, a lovely long he worn by a lady. Boy, this used to be something big too once upon a time. Some of these places look in total disrepair, but uh, to one surprise, they're still in use. The better side of the street, of course, is over there. The Mayan Agricultural Development Bank. We're right in the heart of uh, the government in uh, Yangon, Myanmar, but much to my surprise, the government has built a new capital north of here, more in a central location. Uh, apparently it's not very scenic or anything, it's just a government city. Uh, none of the embassies have moved up there because, uh, hey, they want to enjoy the life here in Yangon. Right, Barb? The embassies have not moved to the new uh, capital, no, have no, they? No, they're staying here. Why would you want to stay here in Yangon? Well, this is where the action is, not a new town where there's nothing happening. We are now by the uh, Myanmar Port Authority and along here is Strand Avenue, right? Strand? Strand? Can't let this scene go unnoticed. Another building that may or may not be abandoned. Certainly parts of it are abandoned. As we're walking towards Strand Road. Look at this, people actually live in there still? It looks like it. What can you see? Or is it Beds? an office? An office. An office. Office building. At this point, we pass two Thalassans or possessors of morality which is a female lay renunciant in Burmese Buddhism. So interesting to be in a country for the very first time. Especially Myanmar. Maybe the last frontier in Southeast Asia for mass tourism. So maybe this is a uh, police building, right there. As we get to Strand, along the water. I guess we crossed over there, Barb? Join us next Friday as we cross across that crosswalk, take a ferry to the other side of the Yangon River, and see a whole new world. Thank you for viewing and uh, joining in our adventure of uh, Asia 2020. If you reached uh, this point in this vlog, congratulations, you've learned a lot and uh, hopefully you can leave me a thumbs up and uh, yeah, see you next Friday. Aww.